thanks for the, the introduction and uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, it's always uh, a pleasure for us to share the stories that are behind uh, the, the labels because it's easy to just taste uh, the bottle and uh, try to identify the, the, the winery, the brand and uh, everything. Uh, but there are the stories that really uh, tells everything about uh, who we are and uh, what we like to do, what we want to do, and uh, what uh, we will do in uh, the future. So just uh, a quick introduction of myself. I'm uh, Filippo and I'm uh, with BB uh, since uh, 2019. Uh, I'm coming from a totally different environment because uh, before working with BB, I was working with the fashion. So I totally changed my mind and decided to get into the wine world, which is probably the best decision I ever made in my life. And uh, uh, I'm sales manager for, uh, for Italy. And uh, once again, thanks for, for being here tonight with, with us. So uh, tell, telling the story about the BB Gret, the, the, the company, it's uh, the same of telling the story of BB Gret, the man. Because obviously Bibi is a person who was born in uh, Fiesole. He's 100% from Italy, from, uh, from Florence. Uh, even if the, the name suggests uh, uh, that he's not coming from Italy, actually he was born here and his family is coming from almost all over the world. So he's uh, part from uh, Norwegia, Norway, part from Israel, part from Germany. So all over the world. And it's coming from a family uh, of artists. So his father is uh, an international sculptor. Uh, you can find his, uh, his uh, sculpture all over the world. And Bibi was following uh, uh, this path. So he went to the Academia Belle Arti, so the art school in, uh, in Florence. And he was intending to, to become a, an artist, a painter. Uh, but then he had the opportunity to start managing his family's vineyards. So the family lives in this very old castle on the hills of uh, Vigiliata, the castle of uh, the 18th century. And they have uh, just a few hectares of uh, vineyards, very, very old vineyards uh, planted with the Sangiovese, Colina and Canagliolo. And they were using these vineyards to make the, the family wine. So the, the wine that uh, was uh, just for the family. So uh, one day his parents told him, he was younger, they told him, uh, you want to manage the vineyards? And he said, let's do it. <laughs> so from the few vineyards that they had uh, without any uh, wine making uh, background or uh, education, he created uh, a fantastic blend uh, that was uh, the original blend of Testa Matta and Colore. So he immediately recognized the potential of the old plants that he had in this, uh, his vineyards. And uh, he created wines that were amazing. So just starting from vintage 2001, uh, Bibi won uh, uh, some recognition in uh, all the world. So he went to Vinex in Bordeaux and Colore was uh, rated the first wine in a blind tasting with other 10,000 different uh, wines and while uh, Testamata came third. So this was the kickoff of the of the, the business. I mean, but you can find a lot of this artistic approach inside the uh, and outside our bottles, you can see the labels uh, here. Probably you cannot see it, but uh, these are, uh, fortunately you cannot see it. <laughs> but all the labels uh, are all and painted uh, by Bibi. So they are coming from painting that Bibi made when he was young. And also the wine inside the bottles, uh, it's uh, his artistic way to express himself. So there's always the research of perfection, like an artist, I mean, uh, an artist uh, doesn't, <laughs> finish his opera until uh, he reached the perfection. Uh, so this is the- Filippo, artistic... sorry, yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna stop you. I just wanna make sure, we, we had a small issue with the, the bottling uh, instructions. So I just wanna check, we're, we're starting to taste with the 2016, which is in your number bottle three, just so everyone is with that program. So I just sent you a quick email on that. So. <laughs> We're, we're, do, do pour yourself the, the first glass, which is the 2016, and I'll let Filippo carry on. Sorry, Filippo. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So uh, I was talking about the artistic approach. Um, now I'm going to talk about the approach that we have into the vineyards. 
So uh, Bibi started from the family's vineyards and he decided to maintain all the features that he had in the beginning uh, through uh, his path into the winemaking world. So uh, we have uh, almost 70 hectares uh, of uh, vineyards in the Chianti area, which are planted with all the same feature. First of all, uh, the indigenous varieties. So all the plants that we have uh, are Sangiovese, Colorina, and Canaiolo. I mean, they are the, the, the most known uh, varieties in Tuscany. Then uh, the high altitude vineyards. So we have very, very high altitude vineyards. Uh, Vincigliata is around 300 meters. Lamole, which is near Greve in Chianti, is 600 meters. So very high in altitude. And finally, and probably the most important thing in the vineyards is the age of the plants. So when we started, he had these uh, plants that were very, very old. And he decided to maintain this feature. So the plants that we have in all the vineyards are in between 50 to 90 years old. So to go inside Testamato, the plants are around 50 years old, while for Colore, in between 70 to 90 years old, which is an eternity for, uh, for the vines. But the potential that the old plants have, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. So they, they, they need to be treated very carefully, but they, they, they produce, they provide a fantastic, uh, fantastic wines. Uh, talking about the, the winery, we just moved from the Castello in Vicigliata, which is this uh, old castle from the 18th century, to Fiesole. I don't know if you're familiar with the area of uh, Florence, but Fiesole is the hill on uh, very, very close to, to Florence. From, uh, from my view, unfortunately, I cannot show you, but I can see all Florence. So the Duomo, Pesole Michelangelo, the Chianti area. And we moved into a very old building. It's a palace from the 18th century, which was uh, an hotel. So we purchased the hotel and we are now transforming all the rooms uh, into the winery. So you'll find the rooms that originally were uh, rooms for guests uh, or the restaurant or the dining room. And now they are the room with the barracks. For example, in my background is the photo. It's one of the rooms of the hotel you see uh, that's written Sala Leopoldo, which is the name of the room. And you find all the barracks stored. So it's a fantastic environment. We, uh, <laughs> we are quite unconventional. So Bibi decided to transform the disco room into the, the production area. So there's still the disco ball hanging on the roof, uh, <laughs> still, uh, still uh, turning on. And it's fantastic to work uh, in a place like this. And uh, in the Aurora winery, uh, we maintain all the same winemaking te te techniques from the beginning. So first of all, uh, we don't make concentration into the, into the wine. So no bleeding. Uh, we don't do any techniques in order to increase uh, the structure and the concentration of the wine. We don't use uh, commercial yeast, only uh, uh, um, spontaneous fermentation. And we use uh, very, very old wood for, for the aging. So the barriques that we use uh, are very old. Uh, they are used uh, even eight times. And so considering that the average, a the average aging of uh, Testament and Colore is uh, between two and three years, uh, Sometimes the barriques can, can last even 16 years, so very, very long. In this way, the, the, the wood of the barriques uh, don't give uh, too much influence inside the wine. So we want the wine to express very naturally. You will find it uh, into the tasting wine. We can directly proceed with the tasting of uh, the, unless you're already doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everyone is, is already tucked yeah. into the 2016. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. And, um, yeah, I have to say it's 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 amazingly fresh and still very luscious on the palate, and it's lost that very exactly. uh, uh, early, early stage. Um, yeah. And it's wonderful. What what was two thousand sixteen like as a, as a vintage within the region? It was a fantastic vintage. Uh, actually, we are coming from from a very good trend. Uh, started with uh, the fifteen. Uh, uh, we had just a few uh, bad vintages, so which were 14 and 17, and we decided just to skip the vintage, not to produce Testamata and Colore. So that's why you don't find uh, in this tasting the, the 17. Uh, but 16 was a very powerful uh, vintage. So uh, it was a vintage that during uh, uh, September, uh, almost August, uh, had a lot of sun. 
even if we had enough rain to prevent any problems in terms of uh, dullness, we had uh, a lot of sun, and uh, that's why you find a lot of power inside the, the both testamata and colore. So the, the, these wines are very energetic, very, very vital. You, you see that that's a very powerful wine, even if uh, the um, the style that we are trying to achieve is quite different just because uh, when we started in 2000, he was uh, uh, trying to create wines uh, following the trend of the time. So very structured wines, very powerful wines. Uh, I mean, Bibi wasn't a, a winemaker. So he had to uh, find his way into the winemaking world. And it was like a, a young musician. When you're a young musician, you you play the music of your idols. So you want to copy them. Then uh, when you get good at playing music, uh, you find your own way and you create your own style. And that's why that's what Bibi is doing. So in the past, we were making wines very structured. But then in 2009, we had uh, a weaker vintage, let's say, uh, which was very rainy, uh, not very hot, uh, not complete maturation. And this led to wines that were more elegant, more acidic, uh, uh, less structured, but with a very interesting uh, uh, aromatic profile. And from that day, Bibi decided, okay, these are the kinds of wines that I want to, to make from now on. So from 2009, it has been a research into this style of very elegant, very drinkable, very fresh wines. Of course, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, decide the style of the vintage. So with 16, we had a vintage that is not very uh, matching with the style that we want to create, but you'll find a lot of differences uh, tasting the 18 and the 19, and you probably will understand what I'm talking about in terms of this freshness. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely, the, the 16 is wonderful. I've, I've already jumped to the 18, I'm afraid, because it was too good, but um, there is still that lovely freshness o o on the nose. And, and always um, still, I, I know BB uses a lot of the, uh, you know, 50, 60 year old vines, still still using those predominantly for, for the Testamata or, or has he begun to bring in some younger vintage, uh, younger vines at all? If it's not uh, from the from the the seventies, uh, doesn't go inside the testamata. <laughs> okay, amazing. No, no, it's, it's an intentional choice, and uh, uh, Bibi is uh, very very jealous of these uh, these uh, very old plants, uh, and uh, really uh, want to uh, use only very old plants uh, in uh, in testamata in colore. And that's why uh, we have the vineyards spread all, all over the Chianti area. I told you we have to maintain three features uh, into the vineyards. So the indigenous varieties, the uh, high altitude vineyards, and the old plants. So when searching uh, for uh, new lands, for new vineyards, uh, uh, whenever we found uh, uh, a plot, a vineyard with all this feature, we bought it. So we have uh, six hectares uh, in Montefili, we have nine in Siena, we have one in Lamole, we have three in Vincigliata. So logistically speaking, is a nightmare because when it's harvest time, we have a fleet of uh, tractors and trucks uh, that keep going up and down uh, from all the Chianti area. But uh, that's uh, what we have to do to maintain uh, this, uh, this philosophy for, uh, that we have from day one. So okay. moving to, to vintage uh, 18, uh, here we find uh, uh, a vintage, uh, which is uh, probably one of the best we ever had. So uh, 18 was a fantastic vintage in you know, all uh, Tuscany. And uh, for us, uh, it was probably one of the most balanced vintage we ever produced because we had, yes, of course, heat, but uh, we had also a very cool nights that uh, prevent uh, from too much heat uh, and enough rain. So when you taste the 18, uh, you find uh, a very complex and round wine, uh, very, uh, very balanced uh, in between the, the power and the elegance that I was talking about. Yeah, and then with, um, with these different vineyards, obviously 
are, are they all quite far apart or are they relatively close um, in terms of, uh, so that when you're saying you've had a great 2018, um, the, the, the vineyards are all acting qu quite similar or, or, or did, is there a big sort of blending that needs to go on? Of course, uh, uh, it's not uh, possible to define uh, the, um, the real characteristic of all the vineyards just because uh, uh, Testamata Colore are not uh, single vineyards. So we don't have uh, just a single vineyard uh, from which we gather the, the grapes for Testamata and Colore, but uh, we defined all the areas inside the same vineyard, uh, which for different reasons, for example, the altitude or the, 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 the exposure provide different kinds of wines. Uh, so we harvest this different area of the same vineyard separately. So we also make the verification separately and the aging is made in different barriques. So when blending, uh, BB can play with like hundreds of different uh, wines uh, and uh, you never know the real, uh, the real uh, provenience of all the, uh, the, the grapes from Testamata and Colore. So it's a complete different blend from uh, vintage to the other one. He blends all these barriques that he has behind that I have behind me, but we have like uh, thousands of these uh, barriques, so it's a lot of work when uh, when it, blending and tasting. I have to say it's really approachable already. Um, yeah. For, for, for you know, for for such a, an amazing year, you would expect it to be still a baby, and and, and it is, but it actually is a an approachable fruit. It's very very drinkable. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, Testamata, when comparing Testamata uh, to Colore, the blend of Testamata is uh, more on fruitness. So it's a, a wine uh, that we really want to enhance this uh, aromatic characteristic of the fruit, and so also the freshness and the acidity. So uh, you can really appreciate probably Testamata before than, than Colore, as you can imagine that, okay, this is ready. Right now for Colore, we can give uh, just a few years to let uh, the wine express uh, all the potential that he has. But uh, this is just uh, depending on the taste that you, that you have. You can uh, appreciate the tomato Colore is up, off, uh, is up on your taste. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I don't know what everyone else is thinking. Yeah, also the, the tannins. So the tannins that we have in this wine are very smooth, very velvety. So the, the wine is young, it's from uh, 2018, but the, the very old uh, uh, barriques that we use for the aging uh, helps us uh, into providing these uh, very subtle and smooth tannins. They are not aggressive. Yeah, uh, but, but do you use any new oak at all or do you bring them from other wineries before? 10%, 10% of... Uh, new wood uh, just to uh, recreate the stock uh, every every vintage okay fantastic mm. um i've got a question i think it's from nye but it's in regards to the difference between testamata and colore but i think we can we can probably when we go to colore we can explain but um yeah, sure. i think i think nye in in a short very short one uh if filippo will be able to tell you but testamata is 100 percent uh sangiovese Exactly. Whereas the Colore is actually a blend uh, of three different grape varieties, um, exactly. uh, with Sangiovese, Cagnola, and Colorino, maybe. Exactly. That's, if that's the, the correct. Perfect pronunciation. Italian pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean that for me that was absolutely delicious, and I can. I mean, I've poured the, the 2019, but yeah, it's. Um, a little bit more more close than, than the 18 but uh yeah I, I have to say the difference between the 16 which is beginning to take that more i say luscious so it was mm. it was losing some of that very youthful fruit and yeah. was beginning to really evolve so um and, and how, how have sort of older tastings uh, tastings of the, of the older uh, original vintages i'm assuming we don't really go back past 2009 since the style has changed a little bit but the sort of 2010s and things like that, are they, how do they evolve? I had the opportunity to taste uh, both uh, the full vertical of Testamata and Colore, which was uh, wow. probably one of the best working days of my life uh, because I had the opportunity to taste uh, 
like 30 fantastic wines. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, there are some vintages uh, for Testamata and Colore, which are really mind blowing. You, you really wouldn't say, I mean, actually it's, the point is that when BB started, it was uh, without any wine making uh, background. So the point is how the, sorry for my language, how the hell uh, he, he managed to create these kinds of wine. And that's the, the potential of the, of the, the, the vines that he had in Castello di Vinciliata. So 2003, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. 2007, even the 2009, the one that changed Bibi's mind, it's fantastic. So uh, the real potential of uh, aging, uh, still we have to understand, uh, which is because uh, we are quite new in this game. Uh, so it's just 20 years that we are making wines. So we have to understand to figure out what is the real potential. But uh, we, we believe that for Testamata, usually it's around uh, five years uh, to 10 years. Uh, so Testamata can show the, the best. Mm -hmm. While for Colore, we will taste. Uh, usually Colore shows uh, uh, a higher complexity, uh, larger structure. So we can expect uh, um, bigger, bigger aging, longer aging. So 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And he, he doesn't make... I mean, the Colore really is the flagship. I think he's he still making like six, seven hundred bottles a year. Is that is that the normal or maybe the well, Colore? The, the numbers are increasing a little bit. Uh, actually, in the past, we were making very, very short quantity of, of Colore around between uh, 2000, 3000, 4000. Uh, for 2009, we increased uh, the numbers of the bottle produced. Uh, uh, in around the 12,000 bottles. So okay. large number of, uh, yeah. of, of Colore. But uh, I mean, uh, we celebrate the 20th anniversary. So <laughs> yeah. we need enough bottles to share with, uh, with anybody <laughs> of this, uh, this anniversary. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then tell us a little bit about the, the, the 2019, the, the, the one that we have in this class now. Yeah, the 19 the is probably the, the peak of this research in terms of uh, elegance, uh, in terms of uh, freshness and drinkability. So when you drink this wine, even if it's uh, quite young, it's the last we, we produced, uh, you feel that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, worth opening the bottle right now. So the tannins are very, very subtle and fresh and uh, smooth. The wine is so, 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 elegant, so perfume, so uh, acidic, uh, that what we see when we uh, open the bottles uh, at dinner or at lunch is that uh, once you, we open the bottle, the level of the wine goes down like this and nobody realizes that we are finishing the bottle because it's so refreshing, it's so drinkable, it's so approachable, and uh, it's not a, a difficult wine, a hard wine to, to, to finish. There are some kinds of wine that you, you, you taste the first glass, the second one, but then if, wait, uh, wait a second. Here, it's, uh, it's a totally different. Yeah, uh, it's got a very enticing nose. You can still smell that very young uh, Sangiovese fruit, which is very, very intense, that sort of cherry note, but mm. it's still enticing. It, it doesn't seem scary. Some of the big Chiantis and some of the big Sangiovese wines, you don't really want to try them, but this is- Exactly. And- that's why probably we are uh, different from uh, the usual Chianti producer. I mean, if, even if the, uh, the, one, the, the, the grapes come from the, the Chianti era from Siena, uh, actually the, the, the vineyards that we have in Siena are very close to the border of uh, Montalcino, but we are IGT producers. So we don't have to follow any orientation. We are free to express uh, uh, ourselves. And uh, if we want, uh, if Bibi wants, uh, we can change uh, everything. So you'll find uh, a different blending uh, in all the three colors that we have. So uh, in Colore 16, uh, we have 80% uh, Sangiovese and 10 and 10 Colorino Canaiolo. Then in 18, you have 90% of Sangiovese and 5 of 5. Finally, with Colore 2019, you got 100% Sangiovese. So they're both 100% Sangiovese. Uh, but uh, the point, the fact that we are IGT producer, that Bibi wanted to uh, to be 
uh, free to express uh, itself is quite obvious. I mean, I told you, uh, BB is an artist. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion, uh, sticking to a recommendation for BB would be like uh, if somebody tells him, okay, in your painting, you have to add red instead of green. Yeah. <laughs> I do whatever it, I want. Yeah. It's it, it's important to note to, to you know and and I said it right at the beginning but but for 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 where the wines are made and for those who don't know you know he he the, the wines of Bibi Greta are in the heart of Chianti Classico and so for him to make anything other than the Chianti style is um it it, it creates a lot of problems but it also gives him a lot of freedom and and as yeah. Filippo was saying is that. Uh, unlike the Chianti producers, they are restricted in terms of how they make their wine every single year uh, and what, what they can do with their grapes and, and, and they're restricted in terms of, of production levels. Whereas, exactly. you know, he, but he also falls outside the Chianti Classico uh, appellation and he is just, I think he is uh, the IG, um, IGT. IG, the, the IGT that, that is there. Uh, which you know gives him a certain amount of protection, but it just uh, means that uh, he has complete freedom to to do what he wants, um, which is a risky strategy because um, you know if it, it doesn't become a popular wine, it becomes a table wine, and he's just uh, you know languishing in the bottom aisles of the supermarket. Whereas now, you know he's he's still very much in that category of the IGT, but. He is, you know, it much in demand across the world, and uh, it, it's it's a it, it's an amazing thing, especially coming from a completely non wine background. It is a, an amazing feat to, to to have achieved. Can I just butt in there, um, Filippo? Do, do you could you just tell us a little bit about you know just when you're drinking the wines, how you see the difference? You know, what are the principal things that BB is doing that make this not a Chianti? For anybody who's confused, well, uh, the, the 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 way that we uh, adopt to produce uh, different kinds of uh, wine is that uh, we focus uh, on uh, what uh, the others are not doing, <laughs> actually, because uh, uh, there are so many uh, wine making techniques uh, that are. Uh, totally different of what we are doing. For example, the concentration and the bleeding that I was talking about. So uh, in the past, probably, in the, in the year past, uh, there was the common sense that uh, the real Chianti uh, was a very structured, powerful, very full-bodied wine. So even if, uh, uh, if you speak with the old farmers, the old producers of, uh, of Chianti, they will say that uh, the, the real Chianti is a very fresh and drinkable wine, very acidic, very approachable. Uh, so when BB started, uh, without knowing, uh, he was following uh, this uh, uh, general idea that was adopted by the old farmers. So. Also about uh, uh, the, 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 the wood of the barriques that we use, uh, many producers want to have a lot of influence inside the wine of, uh, of, the, of the wood, and they use a new, new oak, while from day one we, we adopt uh, very old barriques. So this is a real uh, unconventional approach of BB into the, the winemaking. But Fantastic. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, are uh, are good at uh, speaking Italian, but uh, just to translate uh, the the real name of Testamatta, Testamatta in Italian means uh, crazy head. So uh, when uh, you are an artist uh, making wine in a castle from the 18th century without any wine making background, uh, you have to be a little bit uh, testamata to <laughs> to do it. I, I think that's a great explanation, Filippo. But <clears throat> and the reason I was asking the question is, you know, our, our club members, you know, we we actually have a few different um, Chianti Classico Consolazione that we offer people. Um, but yet the taste profile of this, the smell, and everything is entirely different. Yeah. It's a totally different choice uh, and uh, a different style. I mean, actually, the style, uh, 
almost difficult to define a real style of testa matta and colore just because uh, the, we don't have an out style for, uh, for testa matta and colore, but uh, it all depends on uh, what BB thinks about the vintage. So uh, I told you, BB uh, during the, the blending uh, plays with like hundreds of different uh, uh, barriques. Uh, you, you should see the table where BB works. It's uh, uh, a table uh, which is uh, 10 meters long. Uh, and uh, we prepare all the glasses with all the hundreds of barriques. Uh, and uh, from the eight in the morning uh, to 9 uh, p.m., it starts uh, tasting all the wines one by one, 24-7 uh, uh, for two months. Uh, and so that's the way he, uh, he reach the, the, his idea of, uh, of style for Testamata in Colore. So you find, you find a lot of differences uh, from uh, uh, all the vintages, not just given by the, the weather of uh, each vintage. Fantastic. Well, sadly, we need to move away from Testamata and move to the, to the Colore. So uh, for those, I've, I've said it's wine uh, number six, very confusingly, for, for the 2016. <laughs> Um, just to uh, keep us on our toes, but um, this is, yeah, I mean, the, the Colore, I mean, Filippo will tell us, but it's, it's definitely his flagship wine. And, and yeah. just before we, we, we talk about Colore, he obviously started with Colore and Testamata, but now has expanded to uh, how many different wines is, is, is Bibi Gretz now making? The, in the portfolio, we have 11 wines. Okay. And also from uh, 2016, we also have Testamata White. And uh, from uh, the 18, we have uh, Colore White. Mm -hmm. uh, all the whites uh, are coming from uh, um, Isola de Giglio. I don't know if you ever heard about uh, Isola de Giglio, which is a very small island on the coast of Tuscany. You probably uh, may have heard of this island just because a few years ago, a very big cruise ship uh, just wrecked on oh, the, yes. Uh, yes. next to this island. Uh, it was a disaster. And uh, that was Isola del Giglio, where Bibi produced the, the whites. Uh, uh, it's a very small uh, uh, island with uh, rocky soils, uh, granite soil. And uh, here you have... Uh, the influence of uh, the, 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 the sea, the breeze, uh, the, this rocky soil, also the, uh, the, the grapes that we produce over there, which is called Ansonica del Giglio, is a very mineral kind of uh, grapes, uh, quite different from the traditional uh, aromatic grape, uh, white grapes like uh, Vermentino of the Tuscan coast. And uh, yeah, we're producing uh, Testamata and Colore White, which are fantastic wines. Mm -hmm. And and the the what was his philosophy for for Colore using these older sort of native varieties of Colorino and, and Cagnola? I mean, Cagnola is used a little bit, but Colorino you don't see very much. No, well, <laughs> the the philosophy is that uh, when BB started, uh, he used uh, what he had. Great, so he great, had, crazy head. <laughs> yeah, he had. Uh, just a few barriques of this wine, and uh, he was playing like a I like a mad scientist, uh, blending all these three uh, barriques, and uh, he decided, okay, I keep one with uh, Sangiovese impurity, and the other one is an experiment, uh, it's a blending, uh, and in the beginning, uh, it was a 32% Sangiovese, 33 Colorino, 33 Canaiolo, and uh, with his uh, experiment, he created a fantastic blending of which was uh, the original uh, Colore. And uh, then again, uh, today, uh, Colore brings or uh, carry on this heritage of uh, um, the fact that it was uh, a blending between uh, Colorino, Colorino, Canaiola, Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. Until today, uh, with uh, vintage 2019, when Bibi decided, okay, I want to remove uh, all uh, the other kinds of grapes. And this is probably because uh, he really wants to achieve this idea of freshness, of uh, elegance. And uh, Canaiolo and Colorino are grapes uh, which probably provide too much body, too much structure to the wine, 
and uh, avoid this uh, this elegance uh, to the the final blending. Okay, so so the newer blends, well, we'll we'll talk about with the eighteens and nineteens yeah, when, when, when we get there. So, but this is the the, the two thousand sixteen, which equally had a, a a a wonderful year. But yeah, um, yeah, has that mm. delicious nose, and it's already beginning to yeah evolve quite a bit. You, you it's not that fresh, huge freshness. And 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 twenty sixteen, what would have had a, a what sort of percentage of Sangiovese? 80 percent. 80, 80, okay. Yeah, and here with uh, with Colore, we really select uh, the the gems of our barriques uh, for the final blending. I told you the plants need to be at least 90 years old, and uh, we use a lot of the plants and the rows in the vineyards that we have in Lamole. So Lamole, it's a very small town. Very, very small. When I say town, I'm very generous. I mean, Lamole, Lamole is just three houses. And uh, it's on the hills uh, next to Greven Chianti, between uh, uh, Panzano uh, and, uh, and Florence. You can see from the, the top of the hills also San Gimignano, so very high in altitude. And uh, here we just have one hectare, so very, very small uh, vineyard. And speaking about for, for a business, uh, it's uh, not useful to manage a vineyard of just one, uh, one hectare. So it doesn't give anything, but the quality of the grapes that we have over there, it's amazing. So we have uh, these plants uh, that are up to 100 years old, uh, which are like sculpture with this very ruined wood. Uh, you see it, it, it's, it's fantastic. And also it's fantastic the way it's planted these very old uh, uh, vineyards because it's planted in a method of promiscuum. So the promiscuous method, uh, which was the old way uh, that uh, the old farmers adopted uh, of planting uh, the vineyards. So you'll find that next to the, the vines, uh, you can find the olive trees, uh, figs, uh, cherry trees. Uh, this is just to, uh, was done just because the, the growers need to maximize uh, all the uh, free spaces into the vineyards and planted everything. So in a, in a, in a, in a, in a single area of the Lamole, the old farmer also planted the onions. So you find some onions next to, to the vines. And this is fantastic because you get plants that are always in competition with other living things. So only the strongest plants leaves, leave it. So you're talking about plants that are 90 years old. And the quality of the the grapes is outstanding. Fantastic. I mean, they they, they really are amazing. Um, we, I got a question from from Carlo, which says, uh, you know, the the increase in 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 colore production from the original sort of two thousand bottles to now you're saying to sort of twelve thousand is that from bringing in more grapes from from other vineyards that he thinks has the quality or he had access to them already we we are we are increasing the 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 number of vineyards that we have from day one when we started we had just, had just uh, the ones in uh, in vincigliata uh, but uh, obviously uh, as the numbers are increasing we had to to find uh, more vineyards uh, to purchase and also together with the winery that we have uh, in uh, Fiesole, we uh, also found, uh, just found uh, 80 hectares of uh, new land uh, that we just purchased uh, here, very close from here in uh, Vinciliata, in Fiesole, sorry, um, which is a fantastic uh, vineyard, but for the moment uh, is not uh, managed. So mm -hmm. there's forest, uh, there are trees, uh, uh, there are even 15 cows uh, that were together with the, the, with the land and we, we just got uh, also 15 cows. We will figure out what to do with these cows. <laughs> but uh, when ready, we, when we have, will finish to, to prepare the land for, for planting, uh, and it will take a lot of time. Uh, so when ready, uh, we will plant uh, the clones that we have uh, in La Mole, in Siena, the best plants that we have. Uh, in the new vineyards in uh, in, uh, in Fiesole to, to to maintain the circle. So yeah. the old plants are now in these 80 hectares uh, in, uh, in, in Fiesole. But you will wait obviously a long time 
to, to add that fruit to the to to the the colore. Exactly, it's a um, very long uh, long term project. Okay, that is impressive. Well, that was uh, fantastic. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, we're going to move on to the, the yeah, sure. 2018, which is slightly sad because that 16 was uh, uh, amazing. I don't think I've, I've only ever been really fortunate enough to, to try the, the, mm -hmm. the latest vintages of, of Colore. Um, so to try the 2016 is a real treat. Yeah. So the, the 18, uh, probably together with the 19 of Colore, are, the, are my favorite ones. I, I shouldn't tell this because uh, all these wines are like uh, our, our, our child, so we cannot make any preferences. But uh, for, my, for my taste, 18 of color and 19 are amazing. So here, I told you with the uh, Testamata, we had the, the perfect vintage. So everything was, was perfect. And uh, the, the final result is a wine which has a complexity that uh, gives you breathless. So you, you, you really feel all these layers, all these uh, uh, deep uh, aromas uh, that uh, immediately came out, but also after one hour, two hours that the bottles are opened, uh, you can really feel uh, amazing flavors. It's a fantastic wine. Yeah. And again, a high percentage of, of uh... Sangiovese, but a, a little bit more of the uh, yes, exactly. The local variety. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then with with the like you were saying the the uh, you're coming up to your twentieth anniversary. So with I think with the two thousand nineteen, um, it, it's the twentieth anniversary, which is is um, changing the label of uh, of the bottles as yeah, a true artist uh, only can. Um, and I think I've also seen some uh, presentation cases of the of the, the, the a variety of vintages being produced also. Um, which is we... uh... no, go on, please. No, please go ahead. <laughs> no, okay, we uh, just wanted to uh, celebrate uh, the the 20th anniversary. Now, so uh, here you see the. The final bottle, the, the final result. I, I think uh, I, if you have an opportunity to see the bottle, um, you, you you'll tell me if uh, if you like what we did. Uh, something uh, that we've never done before. We are not using a lot of paper label, but it's a digital printing on the on the bottles, and that's the way we we choose to celebrate this uh, twenty harvest. And uh, only for this vintage, we will have this, uh, this label. And uh, from the next one, we'll go back to the previous one. Yeah. And, and again, the, the colore, the, the artwork is from when he was, uh, uh, Bibi was uh, in his earlier artist phase. Exactly. It's, uh, the, these are paintings uh, that he was uh, making when he was young. And uh, I think that, uh, they really express the soul of uh, the two wines. Uh, if you take Colore, uh, you see these, these labels really tells a lot of uh, the, the soul inside of uh, this wine. Uh, you can really make, when you say, how do you imagine uh, the idea of Sangiovese? That's it. So, uh, okay. This red, this power, this all these colors. So this exactly was uh, what, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, Sangiovese means. Mm -hmm. And also with the uh, Santa Marta. And again, yeah, you 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 get that similar to the 2019 Testamata in this colore. That there is that real Sangiovese power that that comes through. Um, yeah. It, it, it shows a, a complexity that uh, when uh, when you open the bottle at the beginning of uh, dinner, uh, every time you take a sip, you taste something different. So it's a very complex uh, wine. It's not a boring wine. That all the time you taste is always the same, even after uh, you breathe. Here you got a wine which shows uh, every time you, you taste, uh, now it's so, showing something, now it's showing black fruits, now it's showing leather. It's fantastic. 
Yeah, I, it, as you were saying that, I was getting sort of uh, very much herbal sort of notes. Yeah, very much a, you know, a bit of garrigue in there. Um, and it's, it, it is, it, it changes sip by sip, like you say. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, sip it's a wonderfully sip. interesting wine. Mm. Um, and uh, the, which leads us nicely on to the, the, the 20th anniversary, 2019. Um, exactly, yes. So I would probably say that uh, 2019, uh, yeah, I, I was saying that uh, I, my favorite ones are Colore 18 and 19, but honestly speaking, uh, my favorite one is the Colore 19, uh, <laughs> just because uh, uh, I took part of the, the harvesting uh, of, uh, oh, that, that, <laughs> of the 19. Uh, the point is that uh, I told you that uh, BB started as uh, a producer of family wine. So they were making the, the wines for, for the family. And uh, when it was harvest time, he used to uh, call all these parents uh, or all these uh, grandfathers, uh, cousins, uh, and uh, daughters and so on for the harvest to help him. So today uh, he is doing the same thing, but not with the parents, but with the team in the office. So when it's harvest time, Bibi comes inside the office he shut down all the computer and he said, okay, now you're coming with me. So all the guys from the, the administration of the marketing, uh, everybody goes inside the, the vineyards uh, and uh, helps him uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the harvest uh, and uh, also with, uh, with the driving uh, with the tractors. Uh, I, uh, 19 was my first vintage with Bibi, so I was the freshman, so I had to drive uh, the, the trucks. Uh, <laughs> oh, you were driving tractors. I would have thought you were cleaning uh, barrels and no, uh, no, uh, scrubbing no. floors. No, I wasn't skilled enough uh, to, to clean barrels. <laughs> <laughs> so just driving uh, even eight, nine times uh, back and forth from uh, Siena to, to Fiesole with uh, the, the trucks full of cases. And uh, doing these, uh, you really uh, see with your own eyes uh, uh, the, the quality of the vintage and with 19 it was fantastic so we really could see with our, our own eyes that uh, we had a fantastic vintage and uh, also we had the same with uh, 2020 and 21 they were fantastic vintages so finger crossed but uh, we have a very high expectation on the future yeah um i i have a a, a question here uh, saying that um that some Tuscan producers say that 2019 was even better than 2016. Um, so I, it, yeah, that that that's it, and uh, exactly what uh, what I'm talking about. So we had uh, a vintage that probably at the peak of this trend that we had since 2015. Uh, not considering the 17, which was a bad vintage for bad vintage for us. Uh, the 19 is exactly what we were searching for to really reach this peak in terms of, uh, of quality. Fantastic. I mean, it, there, there is there, there, you know, um, been some, some, some comments saying that the 2019 is, is a, a, a completely different, not completely different, but a much more uh, different stylistically wine than, than the 18. There's no, there's no Canagallo and Corino here. Remember, this is very important. Yeah. Uh, if you taste together 16 and uh, 19, you can really understand the complexity and the, the full body that Colorina and Canaiolo gives. Mm -hmm. Also, talking about the color, there are some reflexes given by the, the Colorino, which is a very high colored uh, variety. And uh, tasting impurity, uh, Sangiovese in colore uh, really uh, enhance, really increase the differences between 16 to 19. But the most uh, interesting thing to do is to taste uh, Testa Mata 19 and Colore 19. Because here you got uh, two wines uh, that are coming from uh, almost the same vineyards. Uh, they are aged in the same way, so around uh, two years, uh, in the, almost the same barriques. Uh, 100% Sangiovese both, but you have two totally different wines. And the differences are given by the age of the plants. So you have very old plants with colore and uh, less uh, old plants uh, 
with Testa Matta, and uh, you have uh, a real selection of BB of only the, the best uh, barriques uh, for, for both to give the final uh, blend for, for Testa Matta and Colore. But the ones are totally different. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you can definitely see that uplifting 100% going to 100% Sangiovese. Yeah. And, and, and that is now set that from going forward. He, he is not going to be using um, the native, the native uh, grapes. Who knows? Who, know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, he's a, an artist. He, uh, you never know. <laughs> a million, a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But the, the, this 2019 has, is, you know, uh, very much a success for Colori. For, it's fantastic. For it's fantastic. So, um, it, it, uh, it's fantastic. And uh, this freshness, this elegance of the wine uh, provides you a different solution in terms of pairing the, the wine. So uh, when uh, you're talking about red wines uh, uh, with, uh, sorry, Sangiovese uh, in, uh, coming from Tuscany, the perfect matching is obviously with uh, with meat, uh, with uh, uh, Bistecca Fiorentina, uh, and so on. And they are perfect with uh, Bistecca Fiorentina. I don't yeah. want to to to. Uh, I'm, I'm not well, saying this. Now uh, I'm getting hungry. Now that's hard. No, of course. <laughs> you know the 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 final test of the the final blend of Testa Matta and Colore is where BB decided, okay, I think I have the final band for both Tasma and Colore. He brings in the office two bottles without label, just uh, the, the final band already made. And he said, okay, he said, okay, everybody come with me. We go in a restaurant very close from us, uh, which is called Trattoria Osvaldo, where in our opinion, they make the best uh, Bisteca Fiorentina in Florence. And if the blend that BB made is uh, matching with uh, Bisteca Fiorentina, that's it, we, we got it. <laughs> It's, it's the true Italian taste test. <laughs> exactly. But the fact that uh, uh, you can, you have a wine which is very, not so strong bodied, full bodied, you can match with everything. For example, the, the last time I had uh, uh, a Testa Matta at my house, uh, uh, it was uh, with a pizza. And uh, I think that uh, I, if an Italian hears me, it, it, it could kill me <laughs> by saying that uh, I'm matching a testa matta with, with a pizza, but it's perfect. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, drinkable, so, so so refreshing, and it's perfect with pizza. It's, it's very much the honest grapes philosophy that, you know, it, wine is, is a very personal journey, and it's subjective, so you, you can drink it with whatever you want, exactly. and, and how, how you want, and, um, and, and that's the enjoyment part of it, but it's um, this... I'd say yeah, this, 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 the the 2019. You can definitely see the the change in, in, in the in the, the structure of the wine completely. Mm. But it, it is a success in the sense that it is very very approachable now. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of the Testamata 2019 to compare it to because it was too good. So so I drank it. But it <laughs> um, it, it is a. a um, a, a, a fascinating wine and it'll it'll be it'll be amazing to see how you know in five years time it, how, how that evolves yeah most amazing. definitely no, uh, I, I just have i'd have any of these with, with pizza quite happily and, and <laughs> any night of the week but um yeah maybe the chlore or the, the testament is better suited and the, the chlore with, with something slightly more um substantial or at least um slightly weightier but yeah all, all delicious that freshness really really makes it as you said, they, they, they pair with, can imagine pairing with just about anything. Yeah, exactly, with anything. Um, we did have a question from, from Sam who was saying, you know, obviously now that it's 100% Sangiovese, uh, what happened to the Colorino and Calinola? Uh, <laughs> the... They are still in the barriques, and uh, sometimes it happens that, uh, I mean, uh, these wines are for the company, but the company belongs to Bibi. So it can also happen that BB goes inside the cellar with a bottle or empty bottle. He just uh, opens the, the barriques, spill it for himself, and drink it. So. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> being no, the no. owner, being we, the owner has its perks. But I'm I'm sure the cra the crazy head will probably produce a 100% Colorino from. We were we were producing in the past uh, just for Canaiolo and Purity. We made uh, uh, 2009 Canaiolo and Purity, which was fantastic 
totally different in, in terms of style. Uh, but it's like it's like a, uh, it's even hard to, to describe, but it's uh, uh, a cousin of the real testamata, the, the ones with uh, with San Giovese, but because you feel that uh, we're talking about the the, the same vineyards of uh, Vincigliata, and uh, it just uh, change the 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 grape but the exposure the the altitude the soil it's all the same so you feel there's something very similar That's, yeah i mean and and you know i i look forward to his his next sort of inventions and uh, <laughs> his 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 next crazy head uh wines but it, it's it's now ro rolling around to, to just an hour so i think we've pretty much perfectly timed this it's it's been an you know a really really a pleasure to be able to taste these side by side and understand that the difference that the testamata is to the colore i know that they're the beginning to to come together to, to to a little bit but the colore still stands out um as a as, as that sort of particular different sort of style that that, that, that bb is trying to get so I, I can only thank you enough um to to, to provide these samples for us uh, and all of uh, everyone here to to have joined in on this, and hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I mean, Filippo, you've you've given us so much information ab about these wines, and and um, it's a it's a really wonderful way to spend uh, an evening. Definitely, thank it you. It was so a much. pleasure. It was a pleasure, and uh, I I'm really happy to to be able to share all these stories that we have. And uh, for the moment, uh, the winery is closed to to public uh, just before we are finishing the the renovation. But uh, once ready, uh, I think uh, after summer, but probably even uh, even after the, the October, probably we don't know. Probably, uh, unfortunately, COVID stopped uh, everything. Uh, but once ready, uh, if you, if it happens that you are near Florence in Fiesole, please come here and visit us because uh, it's a fantastic place to see and. Uh, uh, you definitely need to see the, the also the production area where we that was a disco and now I, I was going to say when when is the DJ going to be playing so that we can come in to uh, to, to drink wine and and dance in the winery? We we decided <laughs> to keep uh, the 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 place where DJ was playing the music. So there's a fantastic uh, uh, window next to the the, the, the stairs. Uh, so. When you walk down uh, from the, the entrance to the production area, you walk by to the, the old console, the DJ console. Yeah. You, you have all the mirrors, uh, you have the disco ball, <laughs> the stroboscopic lights. Uh, so it's a fantastic place to, to, to see. So you, you really can have fun uh, with that. Exactly. It, it sounds pretty much along the lines of Bibi Gretz. His winery follows him in terms of slightly crazy head. Exactly. Um, and uh, it, it, it's brilliant. And it really follows. Our, our, our philosophy a little bit as honest grapes that we you know it's all about the passion that goes into the winemaking and and the interest of the story that that is about the wines themselves rather than just what we have in our glass it, it's it tells such a story um what is in our glass but also uh, you know how how it got into the glass and that's what we really appreciate and, and that's you know why all of us all of our guests are here tonight so thank you for joining us. Uh, if anybody's got any questions for Filippo, please, please fire away. Um, well, Filippo, I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, so often in wine tastings, you know, you run around and spend a few minutes tasting each wine and run off to the next one. And having a masterclass like this in terms of understanding the changes in winemaking um, and, the, and the vintage changes for, for two wines from such a, a stellar producer as Vivi Gretz. It's an absolute honor. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you, guys. Ciao. Thank you so much. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.